Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for my year-end best of video. So here we are at the back of 2018 and we are going to showcase my favorite spirits that I've had in each category throughout the year. Of course, I typically like to give, you know, a front runner and then a backup bottle or an honorable mention type situation in case you can't find the first one. Now, again, I haven't reviewed every single one of these. The majority I have, uh, but hopefully each and every one of these will get their time in a video eventually. Now, starting with Speyside Malt of the Year, Craig Alecky 23. This whiskey at 23 years uh, isn't relying on any kind of special finishing barrel. This is just ex-bourbon barrel matured Craig Alecky. Uh, it has a lot of old whiskey characteristic. There's a honey, cereal grains, malt type character. A lot of fruits coming in as well. But so, so well done. Now, price point on the Craig Alecky 23 is about $275, $300 now. That's been creeping up over the years. Uh, but fortunately, the quality has remained pretty, pretty uh, consistent. Now, if you don't feel like dropping $275, $300 on a bottle of that, you can always try the Craig Alecky 13. This thing, only about $50, $55, has some similarities. You can definitely see the family lineage there. Uh, but for a much less expensive price, maybe you just try that route. All right, Highland Malt of the Year. It's going to go to this Deanston 2008. Now, the Deanston 2008 was matured entirely in Bordeaux casks, and it's nine years old, bottled cast strength, 58.7%. It is unchill filtered, natural color. Look at that. That's what nine years in a Bordeaux cask does for you. But the thing that I loved about it, besides its only $60 price point, is the fact that the wine did not have a lot of negative impact to the whiskey. See, a lot of times when I hear of a red wine or a wine finished on a whiskey, I kind of get concerned because I know typically they're going to bolster up the fruits, but then they're going to also lend a lot of tannins or uh, bitter oak and stuff like this can happen. So there's usually a positive and a negative added. Well, in this case, just the fruits. I don't know how they did it, but it's got a ton of fruit coming out but the tannins don't dry it out. That's not over oaked or anything like that. I think that happens to, I think it may be just because it's only nine years old, thankfully, uh, but wonderfully done at only $60. Great, great pickup if you see that uh, Deanston 2008. All right, Isla Whiskey of the Year. Buna Haben 14 year old Pedro Jimenez uh, cask finish. This one right here, bottled at 54.3%, retailed at about a $100 price point. Very, very rich, very viscous whiskey. Uh, the PX, which is, of course, a sweet fortified wine, just lends a lot to this whiskey. There's, it's very, again, mouth coating. There's a lot of cocoa and rich chocolate notes. Um, some uh, dried fruits and, you know, the, the PX character coming through. Uh, then you end up getting, you know, wisps of smoke, which Bunaham is really good about, you know, bringing in a little smoke, not over the top. Uh, but I just love how well balanced and how a great after dinner uh, dram this can be right here. The Buna Haben 14 year old PX at 100 bucks is going to be my Isla whiskey of the year. Now, if you want, you know, just a straightforward Isla and you can't find that Buna Haben PX, maybe you can find Lagavulin 12 cast strength. $125 for this 2017 cast strength. Um, was a really, really good buy. The thing to note, you know, again, I've mentioned this many times before, here in Texas, we're always a year behind in getting our bottles, so we haven't re even seen the 2018 Lagavulin cast strength yet. Uh, so that's why the 2017 is here. But I was so impressed at how not only did the Log uh, 12's 2017 give you, you know, all the rich fruit, and it gives you a uh, nice brine and a good smoke intensity, uh, but it's not ashy smoke. It's a real clean peat. And I loved how the fruit were definitely shining as well. So if you want, you know, a great bottle of Isla in a glass, the log cast strength is usually very, very hard to beat. Okay. Now, uh, Irish Whiskey of the Year, Red Breast 21. Um, you know, there was a lot of really tasty Irishes this year, but this one is always so unique to me. And the thing that I love about it is how much tropical fruit pours out of that bottle. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, like a guava, uh, papaya, mango type thing coming out of that little pineapple. Just a, just a boatload of tropical fruits. And when the, I think about other Irish whiskeys that give me that, not very many. You know, I can think of the Jameson's Rarest Vintage 2007. That was a 500 plus dollar bottle. That one had a lot of that tropical fruit. But other than those two, 
that's about it. So, you know, for the uniqueness, price point, 275 300 it might be worth trying this. Now, of course, if you don't want to spend that kind of money on an Irish, again, that's understandable. You can always go with the regular Red Breast Cast Strength or the Red Breast Loose Style is delicious as well with a sherry finish on that one. Uh, you could always go with Powers John's Lane. Uh, green Spot, Yellow Spots are always pretty, you know, standard, good go-tos. So those could always be possibilities, and most of those are under $100. All right, moving on to Bourbon of the Year. Uh, let me go ahead and just, just call it like it is. Bourbon of the Year is going to go to the Old Forester 1910, uh, Old Fine Whiskey. Now, this bourbon right here, double barrel matured, so it gives you... Um, a lot of uh, kind of deeper bourbon flavors, cocoa, chocolate, uh, a bright tangy cherry note, not artificial uh, that you know I don't like. Uh, and then there's also a, a smokiness to it as well. That's that double barrel, that char is coming in, being a little more intense there. And at 93 proof, it drinks perfectly straight out of the bottle. So because of those points, it just had to be number one for me. Um, Again, price point on it, I think it's only $55, so that's a bonus. It's still out there on some shelves. I still see it. I did read recently that it is now technically sold out, so the distributor shouldn't have any more of this in stock to go to the store, so whatever's out there is out there. But um, once that sells out, they're already working on batch two. They said it, they weren't planning on running out of the one so fast. They were planning on releasing two here in 2019, but now they're putting a rush on it, so hopefully it'll get on shelves pretty soon. I do expect it to be pretty similar to the first one. I, at least I hope that's the case, um, but we'll see. Anyway, so bourbon of the year for me, Old Forester 1910 uh, bourbon, fantastic. Now, if you can't find that one, a great runner up, Early Times Bald and Bond. It is a limited release. It's only going around to five different states. I actually picked this one up in Kentucky. It's a one liter bottle, priced at about $30. Look at the color on that thing. Uh, there definitely is some older barrels going into this blend. It is no age stated, so we don't have a particular age, but you can tell by the flavor, again, there's some good older barrel stocks going in that. Very uh, solid, solid bourbon for only $30, and then you let it breathe a little bit, it gets even better. Anyway, the majority of people I, pay, I pour that for are just, you know, looking for that bottle. Now, this next one, this is the one that... If I just didn't care, and I was just going to say, you know what, this was my bourbon of the year, hands down. The best bourbon I tasted this year truly was this bottle, the Untitled Whiskey Number no. 8. Uh, this bottle was created by the 1-8 Distilling Company there in D.C. They actually sourced some MGP, a nine-year-old, and then they finished it in a cognac cask. And they were doing this for specifically for the Bourbon Steak Restaurant. A few bottles were sold at a few stores there in D.C. That's where this one came from. Price point on it was about $75. Um, unfortunately, I think they only are going to do that one time. So that was it. That's how come I can't put it at the front because as great as it is and as blown away as I was by it, you probably aren't going to be able to find this bottle. So I just wanted to show it just because it was just, it really did take my number one spot. But I just couldn't do that, put that up the top. It's kind, of, it's kind of the same thing why I don't put George T. Stagg or Pappy in this competition every year because, you know, I love George T. Staggs the majority of the years, but, you know, it's too hard for a lot of people to get, and I don't want to, you know, encourage people to go out there and pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars over the retail price just to get that bottle when there's other bottles that are very, very solid that can be found, you know, for a lot easier and less money. All right, now, and one more honorable mention in the bourbon category. This one I just picked up recently and just recently reviewed is the Murray Hill Club Special Release Number 2 coming up from Joseph Magnus. This one, woo-wee, only 700 bottles, $150 price point, but the finish on it is nuts. They actually put it in a Pinot de Chirance cask, and that's a French aperitif. It's like a sweet fortified wine. And it's made from unfiltered grape juice typically, and then they put a little eau de vie into it, bringing it up to about 17, 19%, put it in a cask, let it sit for three, 20 years, somewhere in there. And then when they dump that out, it's a very rich, condensed version of what it was. And they serve it as a chilled aperitif. Now, they, she, uh, Nancy Fraley, who d works with many distilleries, but she was kind of overwatching this special project, actually took one of those Pinot de Chirons casks put a 12 and 20 year old sourced MGP bourbons and it's going to be the 
75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley, mash bills on those, blended with about 10 to 15% of a 10 year old um, light whiskey. And they took those three whiskeys, married them together, put them in the Pinot d'Estrance cask for about nine months as she watched it, making sure it wasn't gonna get too sweet. And that's what we have right here. Again, only 700 bottles, $150. This thing right here, I'll say it, man, this thing's gonna beat a lot of allocated bourbons. Um, a lot of those that people wait in lines for and stuff like this, I would rather drink this personally. All right, but moving on. Rye Whiskey of the Year. Again, whistle pigs, single barrels. Every year it seems like a whistle pig single barrel is just, you know, just catching me like, wow, you know, how great is that? This year it happened to be one from the Blind Pig Liquor Store there in Houston, Texas. It was, actually has a little sticker on the back. It was called the Creation of Pig. Beautiful sticker. <laughs> Genius. Uh, it was a 13-year-old, only 132 bottles created, bottled at 107.2 proof, price point $80. Um, this one has old rye characteristics, kind of like a Saz 18. It's a lot of clove, orange oils. Um, it's kind of dusty. It's just amazing rye whiskey. That would be my rye whiskey of the year. Of course, that's going to be really hard to get as well. So I just encourage you to go out and try the Whistle Big single barrels because a lot of them are, I have, it's, it's rare that you come across one that's bad. I'll say it like that. So they're all pretty good, but maybe you don't want to spend $80. Well, if you don't want to spend $80, you know, there's some picks of this Knob Creek Rye single barrels uh, that are really, really solid. Solid. Uh, this one is about 120 proof, uh, 115 actually. And this was bottled by a Kentucky bourbon group and they actually named it Rhino. What a genius name there. Good play on words, uh, but Rhino was delicious. At about price point, about $40, $45. You know, again, you stumble on these every now and then, these single store picks that are just phenomenal. So keep an eye out for those. Usually the store will have one open, they might let you taste it. So that's always a good way to check them first. If you can't find either one of these two, you can always hopefully look for this. Uh, the Sazerac Baby Saz, solid every year. Uh, I know it's getting hard to find, just like regular anything Buffalo Trace just about nowadays. Uh, but the Baby Saz, price point on it, $40, $45. Great, great rye. It's kind of a bourbony rye as well. All right, next up, Rum of the Year. So Rum of the Year is going to go to this uh, John Drew Estates does this, uh, John Drew brand, sorry, does this dovetail rum called... Uh, Dovetail, and it's a Florida rum, two-year-old, aged in bourbon barrels. And the thing that blew me away about it was when I was in Vegas and going around um, tasting all the different spirits at the wholesalers uh, convention. When I ran across this one, I was just so impressed with how much bourbon influence there was. A lot of vanilla, a lot of sweet oak characteristic coming through, and I was also happy that they weren't over sugaring their rum. You know, a lot of these, when you start talking about the sweeter rums like Zacapas and you know, some of the Centenarios and Zayas and stuff like that, they can be uh, too sweet. And so this one was just right. It was, you know, a twinge of sweetness, but it's not crazy over the top. But a ton of that, again, bourbon barrel for only $30, it's just hard to beat. I pour this for everybody and they always seem to love it and start looking for it themselves. Of course, you got to be careful because when you go to the store, there might be two of these side by side. This one says Florida rum. The other one is a four-year-old Puerto Rican rum. Um, as much as I like the Puerto Rican rum, I prefer the Florida rum, two-year-old. Um, again, that's going to be my rum of the year. If you can't find that one, hopefully you can find this one. Diplomatico Reserva Exclusiva. Green bottle, pretty recognizable there. Uh, the thing to note, it's only $30. Again, it is slightly sweet, not overly so. A lot of vanilla coming through on that one. All right, next up, tequila of the year. This one is going to go to Pat Grand Patron Smoky. So put out by Patron, the Grand Patron line. It's a Blanco. It is a smoky type of tequila, which is pretty unique and rare in that they actually smoke the piñas underground, very similar to how Mezcal is made. And the reason they did that, it was a tribute to the way tequilas used to be made. And so uh, the thing I loved about this one and the reason this was taking the top spot is because to me, when you go down to Jalisco or you're uh, visiting a... A distillery where they're making tequila in the air you're smelling all the agave baking you're smelling the fermentation going on and you're smelling a little bit of that char and smoke that's coming from them baking those agaves and this has that all in a glass okay 
that's something that you know most tequilas even though they do that process in all of them not not the under baking underground but the baking of agaves in ovens and then you know distilling and you have that smoke in the air you don't really get it through into the tequila and this one does and the fact that it's also bottled at a higher abv really helps it it makes it feel buttery and very elegant on the palate and then you get that wisp of smoke coming in it's not in your face like an isla whiskey it's just so elegant in the way this is created this one pretty much hands down was my gonna be my tequila of the year now if you can't find that one or maybe you're not into spending two hundred dollars on a blanco um, you could always do don cayo extra añejo you know i love extra aged tequilas and this one at about you know it's over three years because it is extra añejo is well well done it is kind of sweet in the classe azul type you know sweetness situation uh, but i do love the amount of cedar that this one gives you and at only about 100 125 dollars it's a great great pickup if you happen to be in california i know it's there uh, maybe in mexico some tourist spots look around you might be able to find a bottle of don Cayo extra añejo all right next up mezcal of the year so this one is going to go to the Gracias a Dios Mezcal del Cura. Now this one is kind of unique in that they only create about 500 bottles a year of this. It's their special release and what it is is they take pineapple and supposedly a little bit of guava and they put that in with the agaves and ferment and then distill. And supposedly there was a, a Mexican priest that really loved it so they would make it for him and then you know, they just started doing it every year for him and then selling some. So 500 bottles of this get released every year. Price point on it is about $55, $65, so it's very inexpensive. Uh, to me, some of that fruit comes through, a little of the pineapple. Um, not so much of the guava, but a little of the pineapple comes through, and I really like that, how it uh, feels and tastes on the palate. All right, next up, cognac of the year. So I just got back from France recently. Got to taste a lot of cognac while I was there. And the one that really kind of blew me away is going to be this one, the Mary Melrose. Uh, it was a very, very small cognac house, family ran. Uh, it's an XO here. Uh, the reason I selected this one is because it's probably going to be easier to find. Price point on it's only about $80, and this XO will dominate, you know, a lot of XOs that you see on the market, uh, like Remy and some others like that. No, this one. This is the one. It's full flavor. It's big. It's elegant, but it's bigger flavor. And I really enjoy that, uh, especially when I come from a whiskey side of things. You're looking for that bigger flavor. This is the way to go. Now, if you happen to see this on a shelf, maybe you're fortunate enough to be in Europe and you see this on there. Uh, look beside it because you might see this one, the Mary Melrose Ancestral. This is his best stuff. Um, the XO contains something like 25 to 40 year old cognacs. The Ancestral holds like 40 to 70 year old cognacs. Price point on this one's about 250 ish dollars, somewhere in there. So 80 for the XO, 250 for the Ancestral. And those two just, yeah, highlights of my trip for the most part. Another one that I found that I really enjoyed is going to be the Hein uh, Cigar Reserve XO. Now, anytime you see a Cigar Reserve or a Cigar Blend Cognac, you can pretty much count on it being a bolder flavor. It's not going to be light and elegant like a Hennessy Paradis or anything like that. Those are beautiful Cognacs in their own right. They are very expensive, and they're very kind of light in flavor, subtle, and then the finish just keeps rolling forever. That's what makes those so uh, great. To whereas the Cigar Reserve is going to be a little more heavy-handed. It's going to be more Armagnac-like, actually, in the way it's big, bold flavors. And the Hein uh, Cigar Reserve XO, definitely a great pickup for only $100. Now, next up, Armagnac of the Year. For me, is going to be this one, the Baron Gaston Legrand. And this happens to be a 1976 vintage, um, but you find them all different vintages. Uh, retail pricing on them is anywhere from about $100 to 200 ish dollars somewhere in there maybe 250 depending on the vintage and year but we're talking these armagnacs are anywhere from 30 to 50 years old so a big broad range of uh, vintages and ages but every one of them seems to be really really solid now another one if you can't find uh the baron gaston maybe you can find the lord right i love the lord armagnacs this happens to be a 1981 30 year old 
uh, but I've had many, many vintages, and just like the Baron Gaston, they're all very, very solid. All you have to do, let them breathe a little bit. Crack them open, take them down to about the shoulder. I've talked about this many times. And then just let them sit there for about three months, six months, and they'll just turn into a very, very uh, much more soft, elegant Armagnac. Uh, and that's the, to me, that's just a uh, marker of how Dolores uh, act with oxidation. All right. Uh, again, price point on the Delord. Uh, this 30 year old was like 100 bucks. It wasn't even that expensive. Um, you know, even the 40 year olds are only like 140, something like that. So it's not even too costly there. All right, moving on. Gin of the year. Ooh, I was fighting again with this one because as much as I wanted to do the runner up as the lead, I just, once I tasted them again, I just couldn't, couldn't do it to this one. The Tangeray Malacca. Tangeray Malacca Gin. It's a one liter, $35. I've already gone through a few bottles of this. I know every time I pour it for people, even if they're not gin drinkers, they're just like, wow, that's gin? I'm like, yeah, that's gin. And they're like, they love the sweetness of it. There's a little, again, it's the sweetness. It's, I guess, making it palatable for everyone. Uh, but there's also a lot of lemongrass element to it and almost like a cucumber type situation going on. And then a little juniper. It's not juniper heavy like most London dries. Uh, but the sweetness makes it just sippable. You could pour this on a rock and just have at it. Great, great gin for only $35. Now, if you don't, can't find the Malacca, because that was a limited release, maybe you can find the Gravewell gin. This one I reviewed in Las Vegas when I was there as well, stumbled on it. It actually ended up winning the whole competition uh, for not only the spirit, but the packaging. So it was a great presentation. Um, and this one at only, I think, about $40 uses a lot of local ingredients from the key limes in California, uh, sea kelp from the oceans there, and almonds and all this stuff, mint and everything else. It's amazing how much uh, hand craftsmanship goes into this bottle. So if you happen to see Graywell Gin, this would definitely be a great addition uh, for a great price. All right, vodka of the year. To me, and I always talk about this vodka when people ask me, you know, which one do you like? Which one do you prefer? Well, I mean, for the money, it's hard to beat this one. Beluga Transatlantic. Uh, this one's only about $30. Beautiful bottle. Uh, great vodka inside it. You can sip this neat uh, without chilling it down. And it just is a, just again, a, it feels like a $100 vodka almost for only $30. Now, if you feel like spending $100, you can always go with this one. The Jewel of Russia Ultra. Now, the Jewel of Russia Ultra is a great $100, $125 vodka. It is more viscous than the transatlantic beluga. But if you're in the mood to spend $100, $125, you could go with the big brother to the transatlantic and just go with the beluga gold line as well. So to me, the beluga gold line, transatlantic, or the Jewel of Russia Ultra, or even the, the cheap Jewel of Russia Classic at only like $30, $35 would be another great buy. Anyway, that's what I have for this year for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have other bottles that you want to uh, maybe think I missed out on or something like that, feel free to throw them in the comments. You know, maybe I did miss out on it and that's okay. We can all share information with each other. That's always a great thing. Leave those great comments. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them here for me on YouTube or feel free to ask me on Facebook at my Liquor Hound page or you can sometimes catch me on Instagram and Twitter as well. Again, thank y'all so much for a great year. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.